This is an Israelite Jewels recording. The Book of Remembrance of Our Ancient Grandmothers Chapter 6 An account of the sixth grandmother Iona, and her marriage to Methuselah, and her joining for the Lord, and also, of the seventh grandmother Tava, and her joining for the Lord, in the midst of the dispersal of the righteous, out from the land of Qatar, due to the encroachment of the wicked, during the Nephilim Wars. And it came to pass, that I continued to look with Urim, and I began to see Iona in the encampment in Qatar. And, she is always caring for others. And, she is kind, and often surrounded by children. And one day, a strange youth came into their camp. And he sat by quietly at their place of water. And, the village youth crowded around him. And he was large in stature. And his hair was thick, and tied up upon his head, and covered, with a covering. And some young girls came to Iona, and said, We think he is seeking to speak with you. And Iona said, Tell him I am busy. And she would not go out. And by, and by, a woman came to Iona politely, and told Iona that the stranger was Methuselah, son of Enoch. And she said, His appearance here has caused a stir in our encampment, for Enoch is well known among us. I think he has traveled here, because he saw you in Rabshalish, and he has followed you here. And Iona said, Wiry would he want anything of me? Tell him I cannot come out. And when it was dark, she wrapped herself in her mantle. So, he would not know who it was, and she went out. And stood at the back away from the firelight. When the people were gathered, listening to him give an account of what was transpiring in Aonic. And Methuselah did not know who she was nor, did he notice her. And he spoke with much confidence. And, she listened to all that he said. And, she told others she thought he was a ruffian, and she promptly went home. And wanted nothing more to do with him. But, he remained in the camp. And in the course of those days, he attended the gatherings at the pool of heaven. And with this view, I became aware that Methuselah was exposed to a high level of righteousness, and in the end, he will be left without excuse should he fall by the way. And the people there, expected a son of Enoch to teach with understanding, but he remained aloof, and quiet. And Methuselah remained to stay for the season in which they prepare for winter. And he hunted with the young men. And Iona knew that he would persist to seek her out, and find occasion to speak with her. But as yet, they had not spoken. And it came to pass, that one day, she was laughing, and playing with the children, and Methuselah was standing close by. And they spoke to one another. And they began to become acquainted. And in those days, an understanding of faith was not well known. And neither Iona, nor, Methuselah could explain in depth to each other. How they would rely on Anokis in times of hardship, or doubts. And Methuselah did not know about the white stone. And it came to pass, that they saw one another often during the winter season. And in the spring, he brought her a pure white feather, and a very large acorn. And he said, Will you accept these as espousal gifts? And he explained, They mean for me that it is my desire. That you always remain, pure in your obedience, to Matzah the Lamb and that it is your strength that I need to carry me in times, that I may go astray. And thus, he explained the white feather, and the acorn. And she said, I will see. And in those days, she longed to be with her mother. And when she approached grandmother Aku, she told Iona if Methuselah could love the Lord, as his father did, and if he would walk in deep humility, and be repentant before the Lord, all their days together would he happy. And Iona was troubled in her spirit. So, she sought out the Lord. To see what his desire was for her. And I saw that the presence of the Lord, came to her, and he said, You are the rightful rib of his man. Abide in me. And be not moved away from all I have declared, concerning you, and be steadfast all your days. It is my will, that you, and he, walk together before me in the face of the difficulties of life. And remember, 
the white stone. And she said, Lord, I do not know the meaning of the white stone. And the Lord told her the meaning of the white stone, but she could not comprehend the meaning of it. And the Spirit said for her, to be patient, and all would come to her. And the Lord left off speaking to her. And it came to pass, that one day, when he returned from hunting, that she gave him a perfectly straight red willow, and a toad. And he was delighted, and he said, What do these mean? And she said, What I need from you, is for you, to forever remain straight in your walk with a no keys, and to be like your father in deep humility, seeking forgiveness continually before, the great Holy One in all your ways. And he said, That is what I desire most also. And he asked, What do you think of the feather, and the acorn? And she said, How did you know to give them to me? And he replied, I asked Shamar what to do. And she said, That she could see the day when I may become wayward, and that I needed a wife that would help me keep strong, and true, and steadfast in my purity before the Lord. And both of them seemed to me to be very innocent, in the face of the ebbs, and flows of life. And it came to pass, that after two years, they were married, and Methuselah was a good man, who wanted to stand upright before his fellows. And Iowa bore a little son, and they named him Javan. Because when he was born, his skin was red, and as a child, he was very active. And he grew to be very fast in moving across the land. And it came to pass, that Methuselah was like his grandfather. When he was named Jared, and he became wayward. Insomuch, that he would travel in the hunt, and be gone for long periods of time. And Iona had to call upon others, when she was in need. And as Javan began to grow, and because of the absence of his father, he was a help and a support for his mother. And in the course of time, Javan had a son named Dedan, and he was not a traveler, but he walked softly all his days. And at his birth, it was prophesied of him, that one descended from him, would enlarge the borders of the covenant of Gabriel. And Dedan, had a son named Nahal, and he became known as, Nahal the meek, because he was very quiet, and he also was not a traveler. And it came to pass, that when Javan grew up, and when he had his family, because of the encroachment of the people of Toa, he determined, he was going to move with his people westward into the mountains and the islands of the sea. And he was a mountaineer. And, he hunted in the high places. And he had traveled widely, and was familiar with the place. And when he was prepared to go, he came to his mother and desired that she would go with him. And, she said, I must remain in Qatar with your father, as the vision Ano Kizd has for me is in this place. And Javan asked her to give him her white stone. But she declined, and she said, The Lord has not yet revealed the meaning and purpose of it to me, and so, it must remain with me. And he replied, No matter, I have heard such stones are plentiful in the western lands. And this time, when I viewed it with Urim, I could tell it was Chalcedony. And it was very white, and flat, and round, and smooth. With cavities of crystal within it. And Javan departed with his family and some friends. Through the valleys of Helia northward, and he turned west. And they were the first people to spread themselves there. And the people of Javan began to inhabit the mountains, and the isles of the sea. And their offspring were the first to make a type of vessel, which would carry them over the water. And they multiplied. And it was said that, when a stranger would inquire where they came from, they would say, We are from Iona. And thus, they came to be called the Ionians. And so, I saw that the offspring of Enoch was spread abroad. Because his son was wayward. And irresponsible in his marriage. And in his vision of created purpose. And Methuselah was not home to teach his sons the ways of the ancient righteousness. And as I thought upon these things, I remembered that, Methuselah was born when his father was upon the eastern waste places of the high plains of Mount Mahuja, naming the sons of heaven, 
and dividing the waters to set in place the surety of a day of recompense coming to the Decadar Choi. And I wondered, if somehow, those evil ones found a way to retaliate against him. To come in against the faith of his son Methusamer, after his birth. And it came to pass, that the next child Iona bore, came at a difficult time, because Methusamer was not home, and he did not even know she was with child. And this time, he was gone for two seasons. And when he came home, he showed no interest in his children, for they meant nothing to him. And this time, when he came home, he had a story to tell. And he said, he had been hunting in the far northern reaches of Helia, and he had slept in a cave. And he was alone. And in the night, he heard noises in the entrance of the cave. And when it was light, he crept forward and found an old man sleeping. And, the old man awoke, and he was haggard, and unkempt, and his hair was long, and gray, and shaggy. And Bethusamer saw that he had a knife after the manner that the masters of Seku kept. And Bethusamer pondered what he should do, as the old man roused himself. And when the old man looked about, he espied Methusamer, and he was startled. But, he spoke kindly, and asked for something to eat when he saw that Methusamer had dried meat hanging from his belt. And Methusamer loosened a piece, and gave it to him. And he ate like one who is ravenous with hunger. And, the two sat looking upon one another for a while. And the old man said, It has been a long time, since I spoke to another person. And Methusamer said, Who are you? And the old man said, I am Lamech, a descendant of mighty men. Stay a while, for I can teach a young man like you, many things. And Methusamer began to relax. And, the old man had many stories to tell him. And it came to pass, that Methusamer stayed the winter with him. And they hunted together. And Methusamer was cautious, and wary for a long time, because he saw that Lamech was always on his guard and he looked about in the area before he would go to sleep at night. And he did curious things alone, with strange element, and he did not want to be disturbed. And in those times, Methusamer began to be taught by Lamech. And Methusamer could tell, that Lamech was not teaching him everything, for there was much he was keeping secret. And Lamech, taught him the view and knowledge the wicked have, regarding the use of element. At first, it was simple things, like, his experiences, and his knowledge of the doings of the people of Toa, and Helia. And he performed his works of darkness, over Methusamer when, he perceived that he was about to return home. And he taught him to hunt with great skill using the dart. And it came to pass, that in the spring, when Methusamer returned home, he did not know Iona was heavy with child. And after he rehearsed all these things to her, he told her he liked the old man, and that he had plans to return to learn from him. And he told her that his name was Lamech, a descendant of Kenna. And he said, he would meet him at a special place when the next moon was full. And Iona said, He is my father, do not go to him, nor, think of that which he has taught you, for he is a master of the secret society of Seku. And they are evil indeed and I fear you will fall prey to his teachings. And Methusamer was taken aback, and he sat down astonished, and he answered her, not a word. And a foreboding came over Iona. And when her child was born, it was a boy. And Methusamer wanted her to name him Lamech, for he said it would please the old man. And also, it was customary by some to name a child after relatives. And Iona loved her child and she held the rich spirit of forgiveness in her heart like unto her mother. And on the day, he was named, she called him Lamech. And I marveled once again at the power of forgiveness. And it came to pass, that after those days, Methusamer was gone for a period of three years. And he was not present for the naming of the child. And Iona began to raise little Lamech up unto the Lord. And she was a very good mother. And Iona had not heard from Methusamer for a long time, but she persisted in her prayers for him, and she worried about him for his long absence. 
and for the effect her father, would have on her husband. And it came to pass, the one day. Her brother Jubal came to visit her. And, he sat down and said nothing for a long while. And she prepared him something to eat. And, in the food she added a spice, that indicated that she would be humble and willing to do her repentance. And this behavior of sitting, and not talking and serving food, cooked with a certain spice, was the custom, when someone had hard news to bring. And she prepared herself in her heart to hear that which he would say. And by, and by, after he had finished eating, he began to speak, and he said, Iona, my dear sister, my sons who await without, have been tending their sheep in a distant place. And when they went about to seek out good pasture, they learned some news and Iona said, Say on. And he said, Your husband Methuselah, is now called by the name Methuselah, for he is a man of the dart. And has become a master of Seku. And he now has taken two new wives, and they are twins. One is named Zana. Because she acts very wickedly before men, and the other is named Edna. And she only desires to gather strange possessions. And these two women walk mincing, as they go. And my sons saw them, and they say they have never before beheld such women. And the camp of your husband is very strange. And built up, round about with walls. And when they were close to him, they spoke to him. And, he sends word that you are directed to come to him. And he said, he wants to protect you. Because he is worried that the things you know about him may bring you both to harm. And he now desires to look to your welfare. And Iona wept. And Jubal comforted his sister. And she sat upon the ground, and cast dirt upon her head. And Jubal said to her, Dear sister, do not go to him. For now, he is a man of a dark countenance. And I beheld Iona, as she went out to be alone. And she cut off her hair with a sharp stone. And she gave half of it to the air, for the white feather, and she put the other half, in the branches of an oak tree, to return the espousal gifts. And I heard her singing a high-pitched, sad song. And it sounded like a death song. And, when food is brought to her, she will not eat, but she remains to sit at her place of prayer near a very large rock. And she cannot be persuaded to come to her dwelling. And thus, it was for her for seven days. According to the guidances of Anokeezed. And I saw this was a ceremony of divorce. But, I did not know if she knew what she was doing. And on the day, she returned to her abode, she was hungry. And a very gentle old man, named Ozan, prepared her food, for her as a part of her purification. And after she had eaten, she entered into her dwelling. And Jubal was there to greet her. And, she was comforted to see him. And, she said, Thank you, brother, for being so kind to me, during my time of distress. And they embraced. And Jubal gently washed her face clean. And after a while, Jubal said, I have come to see you again. For I have waited for you to be ready to hear the other news that my sons have brought. And the sons of Jubal, and Puthi, are named Eric, and Amos. And they were bid to enter. And Eric sat very humbly on the earth before Iona, and he said, After we discovered the news of Methuselah, we were on our way home to bring the news to our father and we had already come this way two days' journey and in the night Matza brought me a dream. And, in the dream, I was asked to go visit my grandmother Tom. So, we turned ourselves about. And traveled southeast into the regions of Rabshalish. And I see that Eric is the oldest. And he is a swift traveler. And he must sometimes linger. And move more slowly, to wait for his brother. And Eric continued, and said, When we arrived at the place of water, we waited there with some of our kindred. And we wondered why the Lord had sent us there. And soon word spread, that the sons of Puthi had come. And we were brought before our grandmother Tom. And while we spoke together, a lad came in, and told her husband, who name was Mishor, 
because of his righteousness, that a messenger had come from the regions of Anak. And he was now at the place of water. And he said he came to inquire after those who might know Iona. And immediately, the messenger was sent for. And he came in respectfully and sat down. And, he was given water, and something to eat. And I saw that messengers were held in high regard among the people. And, after a while, he said, I am sent from Enoch, seventh from Yacht's God. And I bear a message to be taken to Iona. And now, I hear that her two sons are here in this place. And Tom said, My daughters have married the brothers of Iona. And these two men are the sons of my daughter Puthi. And the messenger was brought into the dwelling place of Meshur, and Tom. And listeners were sitting by. And, when he was ready, he sat before Eric, and Amos, and he said, The message is one word, teach. And the tiding from Enoch, are in this box. And he handed them a leather pocket which was stitched shut, and which contained a small stone box. And the lid was sealed, with pitch. And after a while, the messenger was given gifts, and provisions. And a message was sent back with him, to be given to Abera, the brother of Enoch, concerning the pool of heaven. And he departed with the first light of day. And it came to pass, that the two sons of Jubal, rehearsed the whole matter to Iona. And they handed the pocket containing the stone box to her. And, on the lid of the box, there was carved, a likeness of an Iola head, with the two horns standing up. And all knew, they were the guardians of the oaks of Pethok. And the carved figure was known to them to have the message to learn from the ancient wisdom known in the regions, of the hill Pethok, with its oaks of Eden. And Eric said, The tidings from Enoch, are here in this box. And I could see, that Iona was still wearing her grieving clothes. And she said, to all who were assembled, Please return to me, in four days, and I will open the message from Enoch, for I need some time to prepare myself. And in her heart, she thought Enoch would reprove her for her wayward husband, because Enoch was the father of her husband. And during her days of repentance, she prayed that she would be able to accept the tidings from Enoch. And when all was ready after the time had passed, Iona was washed, and given new garments. And all the encampment, and many from all the regions round about, were assembled together to hear what the tidings from Enoch would be. And listeners were again in their places. And Iona brought out the box. And she carefully took it out of the pocket, and one of the men carefully heated it up by the light of the sun, and loosened the pitch, sealing it. And when the people saw the carving on the lid of the box, they remembered, that one of the names of Enoch, was Iolake. And Iona opened the box. And inside, it was the water tablet. And all the people gasped. And Iona wept, and exclaimed, Why, O oh, Anokeezed! Have you remembered your daughter, in her unworthiness? And she knew now, the meaning of the word, teach. And many who were present, wondered. If the tablet had anything to do with that which was prophesied concerning the flood, that would come. But others thought to themselves. How could a Nokeezed send word to teach, to a woman who was now named by us, Alman? Surely, it has not been a righteous name, that some have put upon her. And I know, that Iona was the first woman to be viewed as divorced. And, the stigma of it, lay heavy upon her. For the name, Alman, means, to be divorced, or, a woman who has abandoned her husband. And they were not allowed to be heard speaking at any time. And Iona clutched the tablet close to her bosom. And she rejoiced to think of how her grandfather Rishuya, had taught her how to read the guidance tablet when he was teaching her how to read stone tablets. And I know, that the water tablet has instructions on it. That will allow a man to have dominion over the waters of the earth. And one who could work the tablet, was known as a circle drawer, in ancient times. And the wind, and the clouds, and the thunder, would obey him. And it came to pass, that after all had left, Iona pondered the words of Jubal, when he said, do not go to him, for
for now, he is a man of a dark countenance. And she went with her brother away. From where she and Methusamer had dwelt. And she took her children to dwell near the pool of heaven. And it came to pass, that when she washed in the pool of heaven, she began again to wonder, if she had done the proper thing to not submit to the request of Methusamer, to go to him. And in the presence of the sacred purifying effects of the pool of heaven when she was alone, she sought the Lord concerning if she should go to her husband, because there never was a woman who abandoned her husband among all the people. And the people never had known of such a thing. And she was reminded daily of it, whenever she was called Alman. So she was determined to go before the Lord in earnest, to understand what he thought about the matter. And the Lord drew near with his spirit. And she said, Lord, perhaps my husband will repent like Jared did, and he will return to be a father to his family. Perhaps Lord, I should go to him. And the Lord said, Do you remember, that which I said to you in the day? That you inquired of me as to whether you should marry him. And Iona said, Yea Lord. You said, that I am the rib of this man, and that I must abide in you, and be not moved away from all you have declared concerning me during all my days. And in her heart, she thought upon the white stone. And the Lord said, Methusamer intends mischief upon you, and your children. Your task is still to follow where I lead you, and it has been given you, by my father, to be the mother of great men in his sight. Much depends on you. So, turn all your heart towards raising your children, and I will comfort you, in your loneliness. Abide in me, and your task will be made sure. You are the keeper of one of the tablets of Elda. Be brave, and sure in your calling. My daughter, decline to go to Methusamer, for he will not, repent humbly before me, as his grandfather Jared has done. And it has been my will for you, to have given him an opportunity to decide which way he would go, with regard to his vision of created purpose. And this was an answer, to the prayers of his parents. So now, be comforted, for you have accomplished my will for him, and you have been tried, and found worthy. And it came to pass, that Iona arose, and drank water from the pool of heaven, and she was content. And I beheld that Iona stood in the presence of the Spirit. And she saw a vision teaching her wisdom. And she saw herself standing before a no -keased. And, she knew that in his presence, all that passed in her life would be brought to mind. And she felt that she stood there, to witness an accounting of all her deeds, and thoughts. And the overpowering forces of sweet forgiveness and unconditional love, abounded there for her. And then, she looked, and she saw Methusamer, standing in the same place, and she knew that he too would witness an account, of that which he chose to do with his gift of life. And when she felt his feelings with him, she hid her eyes, and forbore from looking. And the vision ended. And then she knew, that all people of every sort, must in the end stand before a no keased in this way. And her account of it, was spread abroad when it was learned. And Jubal urged her to tell the vision. And, from this, a day of recompense, began to be understood, and anticipated. And it became known by all the righteous, that in the end, all must answer for how they lived their gift of life. And the mood of the righteous, was forever changed, and lives began to be lived with deliberation. And Iona joined the people, to their responsibility before God, to be virtuous, and accountable, she being the sixth grandmother, Matza used in his task. And upon hearing this report, no person of her encampment, called her Alman, any more. And Lamech, her father durst not come to Qatar, to seek after her, nor, her husband Methuselah either. And young Lamech, her son grew before the Lord, and he was gentle, and he was not a traveler. And he was delightful in his walk, with his fellows. And he yearned to know all things concerning a knowledge of the Lord. And when he was of the age to be called a man, his mother was preparing a meal for his rite of passage. And as she thought about his passage into manhood, the Spirit of the Lord drew near. And the Lord spoke to her. 
And the Lord said, You must be diligent to see that your son Lamech finds the rightful rib, of his heart. And Iona said, Lord, what must I do? And the Lord said, Be watchful, to discover a maiden, who also has been given a white stone on the day of her birth. And when you find her, you, and she, will be of a kindred spirit in the task, that I have for Lamech. And when you find her, you will know, that she is the rightful one. And Iona picked up her white stone, and held it in her hand, and pondered deeply, on all that the Lord had said. And she kept these things in her heart, and told no one. And from that day, she began to quietly observe those who passed by in their travels. And it came to pass, that some few years passed by. And one day at the ingathering at the pool of heaven, Iona was standing by, and she overheard some maidens laughing, and telling of the prophecies that were made known at their births. And one of them told an account of how at her birth, her grandfather had sent to her, a white stone. And, she had always kept it. And, after the maidens went their ways, she inquired of the maiden as to her name. And she said, My name is, Bodan, and I am a daughter of Amaziadad, son of Enoch. And Iona listened, and was polite. But said, Nothing. And she knew that Amaziadad was the brother of Methuselah. And, Iona went her way pondering all of this, in her heart. And she knew, Amaziadad was righteous, and holy, because of that which her grandmother Aku said of him, when he rescued those of her family. And she thought in her heart, Can the children of two brothers, one righteous and holy, and the other wayward, come together to comfort the heart of a no And when she inquired concerning Bodin, she found that the Lord had directed her parents to bring her to live in Qatar at an early age. To live with some of her relatives who were childless. And they were stalwart in their obedience to a no And, the name Bodin means. A holy woman who has a sacred womb, and it was like unto a, nut. For when you open the shell, there is a treasure inside. And it was prophesied, that she would be one. Who would, in the course of time, produce a child who would bring rest to a no-keyst. And it is known now, that, this woman Bodin, would be the mother of Noah. And in her day, Bodin was one of the foremost women of the earth. And I know that, she could look with her eyes, and see the presence of Matzah the Lamb in all things. And she could join with the spirits of life he put there. And, she would become one of the few in Qatar, who would experience personal visits from him. And it came to pass, that Iona was troubled, because she did not know the meaning of the white stone. And while she could not ask Pechwa, she could ask Enoch. So, she sent word with a traveler who would pass by the place where Enoch dwelt, and he was to say simply, Send word about the white stone to Iona. And two years passed away. And one day, she was brought word from Enoch. And the message was, innocent, and acceptable. And that message is to say, that the one who receives a white stone is deemed to be acceptable to a no And you will see that the holy woman Iona, by her determination, to do right before a no-keased, was able to safeguard the visions of her family which resulted in both the flood of cleansing, and the establishment of Shabua. And after that, she again sought out Bodin. While they were resorting to the pool of heaven. And when she found her, they spoke quietly together for a while. And Iona held her hand out, with the white stone in it, for Bodin to see. And the maiden was astonished. And, she exclaimed. Do you know the meaning of such a stone? And I was able to see the stone of Bodin. And I beheld with Urim, that the two stones looked exactly alike. And Iona rehearsed to Bodin, the message from Enoch. And the maiden sat upon the ground. And Iona said, Dear one, are you troubled? And Bodin replied, I have a white stone, the very same as you now hold before me. It was given to me at my birth, by my grandfather, Enoch. And I have never known what it meant. Who are you? And Iona said, 
I am Iona, and your father is the brother of my husband. Please come soon to my dwelling to visit with me. And, they spoke quietly together, to become acquainted. And after these things, Iona pondered in her heart, all the Lord had said to her. And she was desirous to do all that the Lord had asked of her. And she went humbly before the Lord alone, and said, O Lord, how can I, a humble woman, who has been separated from my mother these long years, and one who has a wayward husband, bless you, to give you rest, seeing you, are so holy. And the Lord appeared standing before her, and he reached his hand toward her, and said, You have blessed me, and will bless me. And she said, How so, Lord? And the Lord said, You have followed the example of your mother, and you have raised up your children in holiness of heart in the midst of hard trials. And in this way have I been comforted in my desires for your son. And now, I have led you to find my beloved one. Bowden. It will come to pass, that the children that will be born of these two, must be diligently guarded, and cared for and protected, and raised up before me. And I have prepared all things before you. So, go in peace. And you will find comfort in a new daughter. And it came to pass, that Bowdoin came to visit with Iona for a time. And Bowdoin and Lamech became fast friends. And they found their hearts to be one in all they desired for the Lord. And she was tall. And had very thick, and beautiful hair, like her father Amaziadad. And Lamech was the most like his mother. And he was small. And very gentle, and of a mild nature. And his strong love for Anokized, was known to all his kindred. And in the springtime, they had their wedding. And it took place on a high bluff, near the pool of heaven. And as I looked with Urim, I saw that at this time, the wicked began to encroach into the regions of Qatar. And the righteous there, had to depart into the high places, so as not to encounter them. And I saw that many of the old masters of Seku had passed away, or were hunted, and became vagabonds in the earth. And a new generation, of masters of this secret society, arose. And they were very different than those who had preceded them. The old masters were simple, and just wanted dominance over their fellows, and all their wickedness was pointed toward that end. And they were vile in their lying, and stealing, and murders, and much fornication. But these new masters, were such, that they lusted after the shedding of blood, and they had no consciences. And they held that the shedding of blood was the center of their religion, and that all the benefits of mystical power, came by blood. And these new masters were instructed by Motsur himself, in the secrets of darkness. And they were cruel, and sinister in all their ways. And I see that the Lord has set his hand to protect his lovely ones from this new, and deepening threat. And I have seen that the people of mine, are not subjected to these terrible Nephilim. But the people of Qatar are facing this new depth of darkness. So, the Lord set his hand, to see to it by the covenant of Gabriel, that all the righteous would some day return to Eden, and this could be expanded to apply also to the righteous in Qatar, and perhaps even to all the righteous throughout the long duration of the earth. And the Spirit said, There is a gracious woman, who has accomplished this for me, and you will see that all of the righteous people of the earth will be greatly blessed because of her joinings. And as I looked to see the women who had done this, I began to see a woman of profound charity. And the Lord said, Let me show you this daughter of mine, her name is, Tava. For it was prophesied at her birth, that she could join all the desires of Anokis, to the desires of the righteous. And it was not known in her day. But the effect of her joining carried on for a multitude of generations. And she was espoused to a young man named, Nahal the great-grandson of Iona. And he is a descendant of Azan, and Imori. And when he was a lad, it was told his mother, that he would be one who would lead the people gently on in their way to Eden, and Anil seized. And as I beheld this wonderful maiden, I saw that she was espoused, and lived yet with her mother. 
and she placed a gourd around her shoulders, that was carried by a cord. And she is going to get water. And, as she approached, arise, and can, look down to where the water is found, she saw a stranger sitting there on a large rock. And she can tell by his garment, that he is a stranger. And because of the dangers faced from the wicked, when they sally forth into their land, she stepped aside out of view, to be discreet. And she could see another person coming to get water. And Tava saw that they greeted each other in kindness. So, she set out to go to the place of water without fear. And as she approached, the stranger smiled at her. And held out a wooden cup for a drink. And Tava took his cup, and filled it with water, and put it into his hand. And after he drank, he knelt down, and filled the cup again, and arose, and gave it to her to drink. And they looked upon one another. And Tava was filled with the Spirit. And she knelt down before him. And he said, Dear maiden, my father Anokis desires that all of his children be able to return to Eden during the course of the earth. And that the covenant of Gabriel may in this way be expanded. You are the feelings made flesh, of one who can lead the righteous there. Will you perform a task for me? And Tava said, Oh! I want to! What is it you desire of me? And he said, Before the sun rises on the morrow, your husband shall be guided to understand a task I have for him, and your task will thus, open up before you. And he placed his hand on her head, and she arose, and went home straightway. And on the way, she thought upon his words, when he said, My father, Anokised. And his words about the desires of Anokised, burned into her soul. And when she returned home, she had no water. Because she had left her gourd behind at the place of water. And she was overcome with emotion, and could not speak. And her mother sent for Nahal, her espoused husband to see, if he could understand what had transpired. And Tava, said to Nahal. He asked me to perform a task for him. And he said that Anokised was his father. And when he gave me a drink, my soul was filled to overflowing. And Nahal said. What is the task he asked of you? And she rehearsed his words, when he said, My father, Anokised, desires. That all his children be able to return to Eden, during the course of the earth. And that the covenant of Gabriel, may in this way be expanded. And she told Nahal, that he had said further, that she was the feelings made flesh. Of one who can lead the righteous back to Eden. And upon hearing this, Nahal was astonished, and he said, It is my vision, to lead people gently on toward, Anokised. Who was the stranger? How can he know, of such things? And Nahal went with haste to the place of water. And when he arrived, no one was there. But he found the little wooden cup sitting upon the rock. And he called out. O man, of Anokised, where are you? I want to speak with you, and as he looked about, he spied a man walking who wore the garment of a stranger. And he stopped walking, and turned to look toward Nahal. And he sat upon the ground. And Nahal approached him gently. And he was afraid to ask the man who he was, but as he drew closer, he knew it was Matzah the lamb. And Nahal knelt before the Lord. And the Lord put his hand upon his shoulder, and he said, My son, I have prepared you for this day. And I have called you to be a gentle guide. Now, I have come to call upon your rib, to perform a task for me. And she is filled with the desires of those in heaven. And, her soul is filled with longings. That Anokised have happiness in his world, and that he should not have the burden of grief, because of the acts of the wicked. And I have promised those, who have gone before her, that whatsoever thing she should ask for in righteousness, will be done. Now go, and I will give you to know, how to prepare the way for her, so she can fulfill her task. And Nahal bowed his head and worshipped. And when he opened his eyes, the Lord was gone. And Nahal returned home, to the mother of Tava, because he too, was overcome, and could not speak.
and word was spread in the camp that something had happened to them. And the people gathered to hear the news. And it came to pass that in the night Nahal had a dream. And in his dream he saw a man walking in a stream. And he picked up a stone and he clung to it. And praised Anokis. And he put it in a pocket that he wore over one shoulder. And again, he saw the same man upon Mount Qatar, gather another stone like the first. And I saw that the stones were shaped like the smoke on the tablet of the day of recompense, and could fit in the hand. And the stones were just alike and, the man laid them together upon an altar. And, he asked the Lord to bring the spirit of Eden to Qatar. And, then the dream ended. And Nahal said, I do not know what it means. And all the people assembled in the encampment, began to discuss the dream, and no one could tell what it meant. But, an old woman said, that Micah of old, had done such a thing at an altar by a high mountain lake. And she knew an old man, who was just a lad, when he had accompanied Micah there. And she said, perhaps he still lives, and can tell you of it. And word was sent to see, if the man could be found. And by, and by, he was found, and he was very old. And Nahal went to him, and rehearsed his dream to him, and the old man told him the way to the altar of Qatar. And Nahal gave him sweet fruit to eat, and asked him, if he would tell all that Micah had done there. And the man rehearsed the entire ceremony, Micah had performed. And when he was finished, Nahal said to him, Thank you father, for your help, I am one who is thus sent to prepare the way before the Lord, for my rib. And there, comes one, after me, who will join the hearts of the children, to their father, and the heart, of the father, is turned to his children. And Nahal ended his speaking, and the old man went to sleep. And when Nahal returned home, he told all that had transpired. And the people asked Nahal, what the task of Tava could be. And he said, We do not know, but the Lord will certainly show us. And the people were anxious to know, how the Lord might be served, and many of them were willing to help. And it came to pass, when all was ready, a company of them, set out to find the high mountain lake, and the altar of Micah. And they journeyed southward to the high mountain sea. And they found the altar, on the south side of the water facing west. And Nahal, prepared the altar, and replaced the two stones of witness, upon it, for they had fallen off, and lay undisturbed upon the ground in that place. And as he did so, he declared that one was a rock of witness, for the covenant of Gabriel, from the waters of Simca. And the other, was a rock of witness, that the feelings of Eden were come to Qatar. And he declared that, because the feelings of Eden were in Qatar that the covenant of Gabriel should apply to the people there also. And Nahal re-established that which, Mahal had established. And, the people rejoiced together there, for the spirit was strong in that place. And it came to pass, that when they returned home, their encampment was empty, and only one old woman was there. And when they inquired of her, she said, People from Helia, came by way of the western shore of the Shaman Sea, and they came up the river, and destroyed some encampments. And the brigands had laid hold of all their substance, and carried it off. And in this way, they had caught the people unawares. And now, all the people in the Pishon Valley were assembled in the encampment, established by Azan, and Imori, to decide what to do. And a young maid stayed behind, to help her grandmother Aku, but Nahal, and Tava, went with the rest to join in with the people there. And when they arrived, the men were assembled in the middle, with the women standing around. And, some of the men were saying, We need to hunt for the wicked, and drive them out of our lands, because we have dwelt here a long time ever since our grandfathers established this place for us. And, others were saying, Shall we make the children of the wicked our prey, and hunt them down? And as Tava was listening to this, the Spirit of the Lord enveloped her. And it urged her to speak, in behalf of the desires of Anokis. And she said, I am just a maid, and I cannot speak before the men, and all these people. And the Lord said to her by his Spirit, 
the task I asked of you, is now before you. And Tava wrapped her garment about her, and she went and stood in the midst of the people. And all became quiet, and she said, My people, we are the children of Anokized. And I stand before you now, by the urgings of Kai, the Holy Presence. A group of us have just descended down from the altar of our grandfather, Micah. And, our purpose for going there, was that, the Lord led us to reaffirm the righteousness established by him, to the effect, that the Spirit of Eden, would come here from the encampment of our first parents. And that some day, we too, can return to Eden. And we have lived in peace now, these many years. Will we now abandon the sweet desires, of our father Anokized? And begin to kill our enemies, and return evil, for evil. The earth is large, and it lies before us. Matzah the Lamb can lead us forth, to places of peace, and safety. Our ancient people, dispersed themselves when the need arose and established new places for their families. Are we not still their children? And cannot we do likewise? And she said, many such things to them. And when she was finished, she went and sat down trembling. And I saw with Urim, that the women were watching intently to see what the men would say, in view of this strong message, from one so young. And after a few moments, Jubal began to speak. And he said, This maiden, has justly reproved us. We must, repent for our anger, because a no keys would never show forth anger. And one who was prominent, who was the brother of Baraka, said, Shall we be scattered like sheep? Are we not men of strength? And his name is Azaz, for he is hard, and impudent. And the discussions continued all through the night. And, by the morning, it was determined, that it was reported by hunters, to be safe in the regions westward, and that all who would should gather their families together, to go there, as the Spirit led them where to go. But the children of Rishuya, and Aku, would not leave the encampment their parents had established. And they were determined, to not allow themselves to be occupied by the people of Helia. And it was not until the wicked killed their parents, that the people in the village of the Pool of Heaven fled to the west. And thus, we see that this maiden Tava, changed the entire course of the people, of Qatar, for, had they remained to fight against evil, they would have departed away from the desire of their father Anokized. And his desire for his children to return to Eden, would have been thus limited, to the people of Moin. But now, because of her, a gentle people would endure, after the flood to continue to walk in the pathway of Anokized. And after seeing these things, I thought about the tenth guidance of Anokized, which says, You shall endure the burden of occupation without violence. And it was a holy woman, who turned the hearts of the children to their father, and allowed her husband to enlarge the covenant of Gabriel. And I know, plainly, that if the people of Qatar had remained to fight, they would have become hardened, and the inheritance of loving kindness, that Anokized has for his children, would have been lost. And this was because, out of those who left Qatar, came Noah, and Melchizedek, who brought forth the flood, and established Shabuwa. And Tava, was able to bring the spirit of Eden back to her people, to preside at a critical moment, because Nahal had done the ceremony, to call the spirit of Eden forth, to be renewed again. And Tava whose name means, to be filled with the desires of Anokized, acted on behalf of Matzah the Lamb. And out of all the ancient grandmothers who came to his aid, this young maiden, is directly responsible for the course the world, took in both the lives of the righteous, and the wicked. And she joined all the desires of Anokized, to the desires of the righteous. And it is an amazing thing to me, that Tava was but a youth, and not old enough to be married, when she influenced her people away, from the acts of violence, and moved them firmly back into the path of loving-kindness. And she is the seventh grandmother to come to the aid of Matzah the Lamb, in his task to prepare the world of his father, for the long duration. And it came to pass, that many of the righteous in Qatar, must needs flee for their safety. And some became scattered abroad, and some went to the east, into the regions of Moin. And their son, went westward, as Javan had done. And soon, 
there were few who remained in Qatar. And it came to pass, that Rishia and Aku refused to leave the pool of heaven, and some stayed behind to help them, because the old couple were too weak to travel. And it came to pass, that the wicked masters of Helia, brought into being, Nephilim, intended to seek out the principal men of service, in the authority of Elda, to destroy them. And two of the masters of Seku, came to Qatar with such a Nephilim, whose name was, Bohu, for his, soul was empty. And he would look, but he could not see and he would listen, but, he could not hear. And he would utter, but, he could not speak. And he would engage, but, he could not feel. And in the confusion, all the rest of the people in the encampment fled, and they lost track of Rishuya, and Aku. And the two of them went to the pool of heaven, where Bohu found them, and he killed them there. And when he was gone, Azaz came looking for his dear old parents. And he found them, and buried them in the grove of the meadow at the pool of heaven. And there was great sorrow, for those who were left. And others found comfort, with the thought that their old parents had returned to Eden. And the consequences of the sins of Azaz, were heavy upon his soul. And after these things, Jubal, and Jabal, and their families, never returned, but they traveled westward, because eastward toward Mine, the land was infested by the wicked. And many of the Kateris, thus followed, and dispersed westward. And the Nephilim wars among the wicked, became fierce. And fear rose up like smoke in all their encampments. And I, beheld with Urim, that a strange spirit began to descend over the wicked. And it seemed irresistible. And it compelled them to want to gather in the regions of Helia, out from all of their domain. And they desired to gather into one body, so it could be determined, who would have supreme dominance over them all. And in their minds, they intended to rule over the whole earth. And, each of the masters of Seku, was determined that he should be the grand master. And their intention was to have one grand assembly. And, they all prepared themselves with what they considered the means to overcome their fellows. And, weapons were seen everywhere. And it came to pass, that by this strong spirit, the wicked felt compelled to migrate into the valleys of Helia, and the migration lasted for seven years, in an attempt to join into one body. And each of them proceeded with utmost caution, to protect their secrets, which were that which they used to try to overcome their enemies. And it was very difficult for them to defend themselves, because they all had slaves, and only some of which were faithful to them. But there was strong hatred toward them, on the part of others, and these could not be trusted. Thus, many of the masters of Seku, decided to cause their servants and slaves to make oaths of allegiance with self-cursings, which are called imprecations. And the ones who would not take such oaths, to maintain their secrets, were abandoned, and left behind. And there were thousands, who were left stranded, and destitute with no provisions, or skills to live. And they milled about. And they did not know, how to care for one another, or organize themselves, except by that which they had always known as slaves. And many perished, by violence, and for the want of food, and blood, was poured out upon the earth. And, they began with difficulty, to establish themselves in the areas where they were left. And those who could manage to provide for themselves, and stay together, went southward for they feared the regions of Mahuja, and Qatar. And I could see, that they were lost, and could not easily adapt to being free after generations of captivity, by hard and cruel masters. And this was all the more so, because their captivity was done for the purposes, of supporting religions of evil. And by the Urim, I beheld a marvelous truth. And the Lord opened up to me, that these abandoned people, only could comprehend dominance over their fellows. And it was out of these bands of people, that the foundations of the nations of old, were formed. And the nations of the Chaldeans, Babylonians, Persians, Assyrians, Egyptians, and others arose out of these lost, and bewildered people. And all these things, began to happen not long after the wedding of Lamech, and Bodin, and not many years, before the great flood. 
and I saw that Jubal and Jabal took things well in hand with regards to the safety of their families and people. And they scouted out the land westward, and they found a secluded valley westward of the Hales River. And they went there and traveled in the night for safety. And the place they settled was just south of the land settled by Javan, and those who were called Ionians.